Hey everybody, welcome, this is Tom, and this is the first in a series of videos where I'm gonna walk you through how to create uh, different sorting algorithms. Now, I'm only gonna walk through a few in the next couple videos, and I'm gonna start in this one with something called a bubble sort. But really, all sorting algorithms are doing is just putting things in order. And that could be really any order. It could be alphabetical, it could be numerical, it could be the size of the object itself in memory, it could be anything. Okay, so uh, what we're gonna do in this one though is just sort a list of numbers. So I'm gonna put five, six, zero, one, two, four, three, nine, eight, seven. Okay, so I've got 10 digits here, 10 numbers, and I'm gonna to wanna to put these in order from least to greatest. Okay, to do that, we're gonna use bubble sort, which bubbles the big numbers up, or it could be, if we're going from greatest to least, bubbling the small numbers up. You could also think of it as bubbling the numbers down, but since bubbles usually move up, it makes more sense to say bubble up. Now, to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at, I'm gonna put this here. I'm gonna start at index zero, and I'm gonna work my way through the indexes. Okay, so I'm gonna show you here how I would do it by hand first, and how this would look after the first time I go through. Then we'll actually make it go through that one time and you'll see what it looks like. Okay, so if I were to sort this, using the bubble sort, and I want the smaller numbers to go to be on the left and the bigger numbers to go to the right. I first start and look at index zero and index one, and then I check if the number over here is smaller than the number over here, so if, if, if index one is bigger than index zero, then switch them. In this case, it's not. Okay, so then I skip over to the next one. Now I check, is six bigger than five or zero? And yes, it is. So I switch those and I would end up with this. Okay, now I move over to index two and now six is actually in index two. So I check, is six bigger than one? Yes, it is. So I switch those again and I move six over. So now six is in index three. Then I look at the next two numbers, and this at this point, six is actually in index three, and two is in index four. And I look, is six bigger than two? Yes, it is. So once again, you swap, and I look at six and four, yes, again. Six and three, yes, again. Okay, and now I have six and nine. Well, nine is bigger than six, so nothing changes, okay? So now nine is at the front here, and it, it checks again. Nine is bigger than eight, yes it is. So eight goes here, nine goes here, and then last once again, seven and nine. So as you can see, nine ended up at the very end, and that's actually what it does, is it goes through and it finds the biggest number in the list and it bubbles it all the way up to the top. In the meantime, some other numbers also get bubbled up. Okay, so for example, uh, six got bubbled all the way up to here. Now, that's just one time going through the list. If I want the list to be in order, what you have to do is you have to go through the list again and again and again until nothing gets swapped at all, okay? So if you've made no swapping of numbers, then you have a list that's sorted in order. So let's look at how this would be done with a loop. So I'm gonna say for i in range of zero, and I'm gonna use, I'm not gonna put length, I'm just gonna use the actual numbers here. So I wanna go in range and I actually only want to go up to index eight. Okay, so I want to go up from uh, range zero to nine. 
Okay, because remember it doesn't include index 9, it just goes up to 8 there. Okay, now this is where the swapping comes in. So I check if the list of i okay, is greater than the one at the next index, then I need to swap these two numbers. So for example here, uh, I swap 6 and 0, so I need to figure out how I would swap those. Well, you might just say, well, I'll do list i is equal to list, well, let me move my keyboard there, list i plus 1, and then do list i plus 1 is equal to list i. And you can probably already tell that there's a slight problem with this. This is actually kind of the first instinct of what you know, first year programmers do is they say, well, I'll stick this one and this one, and then this one and this one. But the problem is I've used this and I've already put it in here. So if I did that, it would actually be zero and zero, and then this would be zero and zero, and my six would have disappeared. So what I have to do is I have to use a temporary variable in order to save one of the two numbers. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a variable called swap, and I'm going to save uh, list i. So I'm going to save the value of list i in this variable. Then I'm going to go ahead and say i plus 1 and stick it inside of here. Then down here, I'm going to put swap. Okay, so this if I were looking at 6 and 0, this will save my 6 inside swap. Then it puts 0 inside the index 1, where 6 is. Then it puts the 6 in the next index. Okay. So if I were to run this, and then I print out my list, what you'll see is that the list turns out exactly the same as what I had up here. Okay. So that's that run, ran it through number of times and eventually it uh, sorted it just like this. What I want to do though is I want to make sure that I run this swapping thing many many times. So I want to go through the list once, do a bunch of swaps, bubble up the big numbers, then again and then again. So what I actually need to do is do this a number of times. Now this is not the most efficient way to do it can do, well, let's do 10 times just to make sure there. Okay, so now if I run this, and once again I print my list down here, you'll now see that the list is sorted from least to greatest. Okay, so some lists will require you to run this many, many, many times. Uh, some lists might already almost be sorted. So you don't want to run this J uh, loop a whole bunch of times if the list is already sorted. That's kind of silly, right? So there's one little trick you can do and It's this so in here you put uh, Check for swap uh, equals false Okay, then if I do a swap check for swap equals uh, true Okay. Uh, and when it comes out of that loop, you can say if check for swap equals false, then break. Okay. Now, what we're going to see is that the list actually gets sorted long before the J will get to be equal to 10. So if I ran this again, you'll see that actually J only runs three times and then the list is already sorted. Now, some list might take longer than that. So let me let me switch around some stuff here. So let's do this maybe. I'm going to put this in opposite order. Okay. So 3 2 1 and 0 and I'm going to delete my line here. So what will happen if this actually were to be sorted? Well, it's going to look at that first number and it's going to bubble it all the way up to the top. Then it will look at the next number and bubble it all the way up to the top. So it's going to take 
much longer to go through the list this time. So if I run this, you'll see that it takes nine times to sort this list. Now, the thing is the list actually did get sorted before that. It just took it coming back around one more time for it to check this false because then the last time it was sorted. So actually you can make this nine and this will run eight times and it's still sorted. This is the most times that your loop will need to run because this, this list is in opposite order. So it's opposite of what you want and the bubble sort will take the full amount of times to do this. Okay, so this is the optimal bubble sort here. Uh, the miniature version of the bubble sort is if I take this stuff out, this is the absolute and minimal bubble sort you can have and still have a list be sorted. Okay, so if I ran this, your list will still be sorted no matter what. All right, so take a look at this, uh, play with it, break it down a little bit, and then if you want to see the next sort, head over to the next video and we'll look at something a little more complex, but not too much so. Okay, if you have any questions about this, uh, leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thanks.